So, with my life, I found that I end up moving around a lot, especially recently. I lived in, I lived because of work. I've lived in North Dakota, South Carolina, Tennessee. I've worked in Kentucky, California, Utah, and. At first, I thought I was going all these places because I needed to make money. You know, I I needed a job, and I prayed, and I asked God for a job, and this one came. And I'm like, God gave me this job to make money. And it, I mean, I was. <laughs> I wasn't complaining there. And I realized when I was living in Tennessee that I had only been making money. I hadn't been doing anything of any greater value. And I was reading the Book of Mormon, and the story of Ena stuck out to me. And... Enos is the son of a prophet. He's not a bad guy. He's not an amazing, crazy, you know, awesome prophet. He's just a normal guy like us. And he shares the story of when he finally got it, and when he started becoming a dedicated disciple of Christ. And this is what he says. He says, Behold, I went to hunt beasts in the forest, and the words which I had often heard my father speak concerning eternal life and the joy of the saints sunk deep into my heart. And at that time, I was living in Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm like, yeah, I came to Nashville to earn money. You know, he went to the forest to hunt bees. I came to Nashville to earn money. And I was thinking about the scriptures. And he was talking about how he was thinking about the scriptures. It says, and my soul hungered. And I kneeled down before my maker. And I cried unto him in mighty prayer and supplication from my own soul. And all the day long did I cry unto him. Yea, and when the night came, I did raise my voice high that it reached the heavens. And there came a voice saying, Enos, thy sins are forgiven thee, and thou shalt be blessed. And that part of the story never hit me like that before. That because of where he was at, he was in a situation to have a come to Jesus moment. And... I love that story because what happens next is after he had confirmation from God that his sins were forgiven, the next thing he desired was to share with others. And so he started praying and asking for his brothers. And then he went from his brothers to his enemies. And when I was living in Tennessee, I made the decision that I wouldn't be ashamed of Jesus Christ. And I would share what I believed and what I knew and that he was my Lord and my Savior with all those around me. And it was amazing to see people open up. And I'd be talking with somebody, and I'd mentioned that I believe in Jesus Christ. And they looked at me like, I knew you were a brother. I just knew it. I knew it. And I thought, like, how could I have been living, being so afraid to share what I knew was true? And it's been amazing because for the past two years of my life, I've been doing that now. As I've lived and worked and traveled around, I've been afraid to share who I was, to share what I believed. Just like Enos, I've seen success. I've seen people who come into Christ. I've talked to so many people, and I've shared with them the messages that are contained within the Book of Mormon, and it answers their prayers. And they kind of have this moment just like Enos. I'm like, I came over to you, into your life because of one thing or another. Tonight you may have had an order fulfilled, but in reality, tonight you may gain your soul like Enos did. And that's why I love the story of Venus, is because I see it every day. Every time he felt the urge to go out and get some crack, he would grab the Book of Mormon instead. And, I mean, some days we would come back and he would have read, like, 50 pages, just because I guess he had lots of temptations to go use drugs. 